Hello, it's the underdog here, and today I want to talk about Clay Pigeon Control. Before I begin, please be aware that I use the term Clay Pigeon and Frisbee interchangeably. So, what is Clay Pigeon Control? Clay Pigeon Control, or CPC, refers to when you shoot your clay pigeon. By controlling the timing of the shot, you can allow many more possibilities to occur than if you simply shoot to hit the player immediately. Why should I not hit the player immediately with the shots? Frisbees pose a unique situation in that you have discretion over the timing of the shots, which means by delaying the shot you can force your opponent's hit stun to last longer, thus keeping them trapped for longer, granting you the ability to get in another hit. If the clay pigeon rebounds off a shield, delaying the shot can mean the airborne rebounded frisbee poses a threat to jumpers, and if you're fast enough you can grab the opponent in their shield and then throw them into the frisbee as you shoot it. Now, Clay Pigeon Control has what I can best describe as a sweet spot and a sour spot. The sweet spot is indicated by the fact the player remains in hit stun longer, and the sour spot is when the player is either not hit or when hit they merely flinch. The sweet sour zone moves relative to the percentage of damage on the opponent and the move staling that is in effect, as well as the relative size and hitbox of the opponent. A player with more damage will stay in hit stun longer, allowing you to delay the shot longer, but furthermore they will be sent further upwards, thus further out the reach of the frisbee. Lower percentages have less hit stun, which means they can escape the frisbee sooner, which means the window for the sweet sour zone is much, much smaller. The smaller a character is, the smaller the sweet sour zone is. The larger they are, the bigger the sweet sour zone is. There's one exception to the sweet sour zone rule. Large characters sometimes do not flinch from small blows, but this only occurs at lower percents. What combos can I get out of Clay Pigeon Control? You won't be able to choose, as the combo is chosen by what percent, what weight, what size, the momentum and the position of the opponent. The most common combo is Clay Pigeon into Forward Air, which can sometimes be chained. However, more powerful combos include Clay Pigeon to Up Air, Clay Pigeon to Down Air, Clay Pigeon to Down Air into Forward Smash, Clay Pigeon into Down Air Stage Rebound into Up Air, and Clay Pigeon to Up Smash, all of which are potential KO moves. These are much harder to hit and thus more likely to fail, however it gives better odds of getting a KO conversion. Are there any approximate rules of fun? Yes. If a character has heavier weights, generally the following percentage range increases, especially if they're larger. At 0 to 10%, clay pigeon combos into a dash grab or dash attack nicely, arguably a true combo. At 20 to 30 to 40%, clay pigeon combos into down air depending on the character. At 20 to 50 70%, clay pigeon combos into forward air. At 70% or above, on mid to light characters, forward air or up air, depending on character, is more likely. Is there any additional information? An additional set of tips for Clay Pigeon is how to handle the response of your opponent. Clay Pigeon is excellent for testing the waters of your opponent, and each will respond differently. A list of responses include rushing and being hit by Clay Pigeon, shielding, spot dodging, roll dodging, short hop, full hop, and attacking and destroying the frisbee. Shielding can be punished by a dash grab. Spot dodges of your dash grab can be punished by a dash up smash attack. Roll dodging cannot be easily punished and depends on your own personal playstyle. Some might require read grabs, others might require a fake out into roll dodge. Short hops can be punished by dash up smash attacks. Full hops can be punished by up air, unless the opponent has a lot of down air priority, then a careful forward air should work. Attacks that destroy the frisbee can be countered by layering the projectiles. For example, having a gunman or can hit the opponent just after they hit the frisbee, or attacking them yourself. The above tactics work best with gunman deployments as a duck hunt duo can move whilst the gunman shoots, but they also have some application to clay pigeon. 
I just wanted to uh, take a time out to craft a personal message on the end of the video. Firstly, I want to apologise for the delay in the Duck Hunt Duo videos coming out. The channel's going through an experimental phase. We, I was hoping to diversify into um, other areas, other games, other topics and stuff. Writing up um, videos on Duck Hunt's techniques is obviously a very time-consuming process and I've only got a limited amount of resources in which to do it with. For example, I don't have a capture card. Um, but what I want to try and do is just expand the channel and try other areas. So if, watch, if, you, if you want, watch the other videos. Let me know what you think. Some of them might be cringeworthy, others might be funny i genuinely don't know suggestions as to what topics to cover for duck hunt duo next would be also greatly appreciated but something else i want to try is uh, spreading into the realm of game theories now i know it's an oversaturated topic that everyone on youtube is presently doing but it's something that's intrigued me particularly because i like taking up contrarian positions for example i want to prove that cranky kong is actually innocent of all crimes I don't think he's actually guilty, and as opposed to the conventional presenting a one-sided system, I want to sort of take a court style advocating one position or another so we get like a full spectrum of all arguments. Uh, look for that video, that might be coming down the pipeline in the future. Obviously, I want to thank the people who've encouraged me, because certainly it helped inspire the development of the edge guarding and the uh, and this video obviously as well as the can to save it's greatly appreciated i know that my knowledge of smash might not be up to scratch for like all the really hardcore tournament players but i just wanted to help try and develop the duck hunt duo meta game for the other duck hunt duo players especially both newer and advanced players because I feel like sometimes I just stumble across things that most people haven't heard of and they're like ooh nice shiny glitch and 0% KO move for little Mac and I feel like I should share that and I, I just want to do my little bit to try and help Duck Hunt Duo's players who are in competitive tournaments it's sort of my way of contributing to what I consider to be an undervalued character. I certainly feel that the potential for Duck Hunt to be a successful character is there if the right set of combos and techniques can be found i mean in uh, melee yoshi was considered a non top tier character and one player mastered him and he because he was so obscure so rarely seen in the top tier that when he did appear nobody knew how to handle him and he actually managed to storm his way through i think was it As Asma? I, I don't know how to pronounce that guy's name. But I, I want that to happen with Duck Hunt Duo. Anyway, please continue to give feedback and constructive criticisms, especially on the experimental series, because this helps shape and guide the direction of the channel. Please leave as many comments as you like. The more comments, the better. It helps me make informed choices. Both positive and negative comments are encouraged, although hopefully not too rude or not too negative in the sense constructive criticism is preferred more than just, ah, oh, you're stupid and you did this wrong. I'm bound to make a few mistakes here and there because I'm not what you would call uh, a veteran at the Smash C. Anyway, thank you for taking this time to listen to my personal message as well as watching this video. Uh, I will hope to see you in the next video and as all, thanks for watching.